All right, it's time to introduce you to my boy, mm -hmm. Thomas Malthus, and his theory on population growth, and it's uh, bleak. So if you're ready to get them brain cows milked, well, let's get to it. Okay, so Thomas Malthus was an Anglican minister who, between preaching sermons and visiting members of his parish, liked to ponder the ultimate destruction of the human race, as one does. Anyway, in 1798, he published his most famous work, an essay on the principle of population, in which he made some astonishing claims. First, he noted that food was necessary for life. Okay, so far I'm with you. Second, he said that the passion between the sexes is a constant, by which he meant, um, you, you know what he meant. So, two laws of human society. We have to eat to live, and due to our passion, we just keep on multiplying. And really, I don't think anybody could argue with those two points. Oh, and by the way, if you want note guides to follow along with this video and all my videos, check the link in the description. Anyway, Malthus lived right at the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, which we're going to learn all about in Unit 7. But here, all you need to know is that this revolution caused a massive explosion in population growth due to two factors. First, birth rates were slowly increasing. Second, death rates were falling sharply because new medicines were introduced that helped people live longer. It was during this time that the bubonic plague, which had killed large swaths of humanity in the preceding centuries, just sort of went away. Additionally, thanks to folks like Edward Jenner, vaccines were introduced, which took much of the sting out of pandemic diseases like smallpox, and that meant people were living longer. In other words, we're right about here on the demographic transition model. Oh, we're just tying things together and it feels good, doesn't it? Now, you and me look at all those developments and we're like, how marvelous. But Malthus looked at all those people living longer and was like, this is terrible. And here's why he was so dumpy. Now, based on the two principles I mentioned earlier, Malthus observed that while the population was growing geometrically, the food supply was growing arithmetically. In other words, if people kept obeying their passions and multiplying like rabbits, the earth would soon run out of food. And what would happen then? Well, that population that had so unthinkingly obeyed its passions to multiply would be plunged into misery and vice, which means famines and wars and plagues. And once all those events reduced the population to a manageable level equal to the food supply, well, yeah, they could try again. So what was Malthus's solution to this problem? Stop people from having so many dang babies. So delay marriage have less children, stop governments from helping the poor because they seem to have so many more babies than everyone else. <laughs> I bet he was pretty fun to hang out with. Now, in case you're not paying attention, let me point out that Malthus was, uh, wrong. When Malthus published his sour-tasting essay, there were about a billion people on the planet. Today, there are about eight billion, and so far we haven't been made to endure the cycle of misery and apocalyptic end of humanity that Malthus predicted. So, why is that? Well, a couple centuries later, we can see what Malthus could not, namely that new technologies enabled the growth of the food supply to keep up with the population. For example, the rise of mechanized farming and chemical fertilizers have increased crop yields far beyond what Malthus could have imagined. Also, technologies to preserve food were invented, like refrigeration, which allows food to last longer and be transported greater distances. And all that has meant that the food supply in general has kept up with population growth. Now, just because Malthus was basically wrong doesn't mean his theory doesn't still have influence. In fact, around the middle of the 20th century, Malthusian thought experienced a kind of revival with the rise of the Neo-Malthusians, the most famous of which is Paul Ehrlich. And he essentially argued along the same lines as Malthus, saying that we were rapidly approaching the point of apocalyptic misery, but, you know, we haven't. Anyway, one of the most significant critiques of Malthusian theory came from economist Esther Bazarup, who argued that the rate of food production was directly proportional to the rate of population growth. In other words, when populations grow, they are going to find a way to innovate and feed themselves, and that seems to be how it's gone. All right, click here to keep reviewing my Unit 2 videos, and click here to grab my video note guides, which are for anyone who wants to get an A in their class but just can't stand reading their textbook. And I'll catch you on the flip-flop. I'm Lerout.